Hello, I'm Randy Hannon, Associate Director of the 390th Memorial Museum, the B-17 Museum located on the grounds of the Pima Air and Space Museum here in Tucson, Arizona. Welcome again to our ongoing Museum from the Home series. In this segment, I want to talk about our POW exhibit. POW means prisoner of war for those not familiar with the acronym. The risk of dying on a mission or becoming a prisoner of war was a reality that crewmen faced each time they took their flying fortresses on a combat mission. Though many did not think that being shot down or injured could it ever happen to them. From July of 1943 to July of 1945, the 390th Bomb Group flew roughly 301 combat missions, of which 69 resulted in crews having to bail out, leaving those who survived at the mercy of the Germans. An interesting fact about the 390th is that the total POWs, 731, actually surpassed the group's casualties, which numbered 714. There were at least 10 Stalag Luftkamps run by the German Luftwaffe independent of the German Army POW camps. Upon capture, the airmen were thrown into solitary confinement. Alone, and often injured, they feared trickery or torture by the Gestapo. But the brave flyers of the 390th resolved to tell nothing but their name, rank, and serial number during enemy interrogation. Now let me take you back to 9 September 1944 and crew 54 on a mission to Dusseldorf, Germany, when their B-17 was severely damaged by anti-aircraft fire. The crew was forced to bail out of their crippled aircraft parachuting into Germany where they were captured and imprisoned for the remaining eight months of the war. One of the captured crewmen, Staff Sergeant Jack McCracken, engineer and top turret gunner, gives a brief description of the camp that he found himself in. Well, the barracks were constructed of wood and set on posts about 30 inches above the ground, I guess. The open area under the barracks was a forbidden area, as the guards kept a close watch under there to ensure we didn't try to tunnel out of camp. There were nine or ten rooms along each side of the barracks, with a hallway running through the center from end to end. One end room was reserved as a community room for bathing, although there was no running water. The same room was used as a latrine at night when we were locked in. We carried cold water from the outside well for any washing or bathing. All washing of clothes, shaving, or eating were out of our all-purpose bowl, which was just a regular serving-type dish. Food at Stalag Luft 4 wasn't plentiful, but was sufficient to keep the newer prisoners in reasonable shape. Most of the time, we received the equivalent of a German soldier's food ration, not much compared to what we were used to in our daily army rations. The brave men imprisoned in these camps were forced to wait, their fates in the hands of the German captors. Men passed time reading or playing cards, trying to find ways to make the long hours and days pass more quickly. However, the filthy conditions, frigid temperatures, infestations, and lack of food really wore on them. As the war came to an end and Germany's defeat was all but guaranteed, rumors about their fate really ramped up. The burning question on everyone's mind was, will I survive? Many were forced on death marches, marked by endless walking with very little food, moving from one camp to another. Ultimately, freedom and victory came for them in the form of Allied liberators, whom they welcomed with tears of joy and relief. If you're interested in learning more of the stories of our POWs, please visit our POW exhibit here at the 390th Memorial Museum. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Museum from Home. See you again soon.